Welcome, gamers from around the globe. You've dropped into the best place for Game Pass news. That's right, it's the Game Pass Tracker Show. This is episode 141, recorded live, live, I tell you, Thursday, February 22nd. I'm Nick Metzger here with the best dang co-host a guy could ever have, Mr. Sean Abbott himself. We're going to fill your brains with all this week's bits and bobs of Xbox like we got a new new tranche of games. Can't wait to talk about that. Phil sits down with Sarah and Matt Booty to talk about the future of games. Obviously hitting on that for sure. And oh, do we have exclusives? Microsoft exclusives going to Nintendo? Sure do. You better sit down, buckle up, because Game Pass Tracker Show is one crazy ride. Hey, diddly doodly, everybody. How are you today? And welcome to the show. We just want to welcome you to the, your favorite Xbox Game Pass podcast, the Game Pass Tracker Show. You can find us on pretty much every social networking app that's out there. And we have just surpassed 5,000 followers on Freds. So make sure if you are a follower of us on Freds, you check that out because there is a giveaway happening. Everything is at Game Pass Tracker. Uh, if you have any thoughts, any questions, do not hesitate to shout out to us. You can send us an email, uh, show at gamepasstracker.com. And if you are liking what you're hearing, you, we would love to hear that from you. So you can leave us a review, leave some stars on your podcast app of choice. It really helps us grow and really helps us reach more fans like yourself. And we wouldn't be a Game Pass Tracker. We wouldn't be a Game Pass show if we didn't talk about Phil and the crew themselves over at Xbox Game Pass. If you love Game Pass and you love our show and you want to show us support, head to the link in the description and sign up to Game Pass at the xbox.com website. You'll not only be supporting us, the Game Pass Tracker show, but you'll also be signing up to the best gaming subscription out there, Xbox Game Pass. So sign up to whatever level you desire, PC Game Pass, Car, or Game Pass Ultimate. Just play your own way by using the code in the chat are in the show notes and you can help us create more amazing content for you guys out there our amazing fans so without much more shine about everything that we love and everything that we have let's head over to the game pass headlines It's the Game Pass headlines. We're talking about what is out this week, folks. Um, we, I'm going to tell you in just a second once I <laughs> once I get there. For sure, it's going to happen. Um, Return to Grace. We started with Return to Grace. A daring space archaeologist has just unearthed the ancient resting place of a long-lost AI god known as... Well, Grace, adventure with various fractured AI personalities as you uncover the great mystery of why she has shut down all those years ago in the first-person narrative adventure set in a visually stunning 60s retro sci-fi world. And as most things are these days, it's available everywhere. Uh, next, we have... Tales of Arise, also available everywhere. As two worlds of conflict converge in Tales of Arise, two people from opposite walks of life join forces to challenge their fates and create a new future. Along the way, meet up with unique cast of allies, all with their own reasons to fight, featuring a long-time combat system. Battles are energetic and enthralling and countless, with countless combinations of skills and abilities. Then, February 22nd, that's today, folks, Bluey, the video game, available everywhere. Join the fun with Bluey and her family in Bluey, the adventure, the video game. Play a brand new story set across four interactive adventures. For the first time ever, explore iconic locations such as Healer House, Playgrounds, Creek, and a bonus beach location. Play your favorite games from the TV show, including Keepy Uppy, Chatter Max Chase, and more. <laughs> um, and then also we got a surprise drop of Dead Island 2. It's a game about zombies that Sean can tell you more about. This is a great segue to Sean. <laughs> yeah, so Dead Island 2 is um, it's basically a, a, a version of Dying Light 
uh, if you've ever played that game, minus all the parkour action, uh, first person zombie survival horror type game where you're collecting collect collecting items which you can then use to craft and make your weapons better while enjoying smashing in the skulls of lots of dead zombies there is a great storyline to this you get to play as four or five different characters all with unique strengths and weaknesses um and if you enjoy dead island the, the first one like i did um go ahead and try this i'm going to talk about it more in the um in the dashboard later on because i have been playing it before we started this evening awesome so moving moving into what is out next week um man eater returns so if you uh, ever had the craving to be a shark that would eat people and other animals and smash things with its head go play this game and um, it's returning to the game pass library man eater is a single player action rpg set in the gulf coast unforgiving waters fight to survive in the open ocean swamps rivers and with danger lurking at every depth, your only tools are your wits, your jaws, and an uncanny ability to evolve as you feed. Um, I have played this game. Um, I believe it's we've got a video of me playing this game, possibly on what was the Game Pass News mm, yeah. YouTube channel. Um, so you can go there and check that out. Um, I will try my hardest at some point to try and get back to this and maybe do uh, an upstream. But it's a fun game. If you've ever, like I said, if you've ever wanted to go and play as a shark, go play this game. You'll enjoy it. Uh, so that's February 27th. That's coming everywhere. Uh, and then Madden NFL 24 is coming to the cloud via EA Play. Um, I mean, I've only just got into the NFL this year. Um, thoroughly enjoyed the match, the the Super Bowl, and have a feeling that I am going to be into this big time. It's become a massive talking point at home as well as with a couple of guys at work. But Ultimate members can start their season with the Xbox Cloud Gaming on February 27th, 2024, courtesy of EA Play. Don't forget that. Until March 8th, you'll also score an Ultimate Team Supercharge Pack with your membership. So there are some perks to getting this early on Cloud. So go give it a go. Um, and then, obviously, up until the 8th of March, if you do that, you will also get some added bonuses as well. Um, coming February 28th, Invisible. This is coming to everywhere. And this is also another game that's making a return to the Game Pass library. Immerse yourself in a fantastical world of with dozens of playable characters, a rich storytelling experience and gameplay that's easy to learn but difficult to master. With a huge fantasy world to explore and variety of characters to meet and fight alongside, uh, you can help uh, Jean, uh, Gina... Uh, a J N A. It's really hard. Why do I always get the ones with the really hard? <laughs> uh, so anyway, help her learn about herself and how to save her world. Um, I can't remember this either coming to Game Pass originally or leaving. So it's interesting. Uh, February 29th coming also to everywhere, like Nick alluded to earlier. Um, we seem to be getting a lot of these that are coming to everywhere. It is Space Engineers, a sandbox game about engineering, construction, exploration, and survival in space on planets. Uh, players will build spaceships, wheeled vehicles, space stations, planetary outposts of various sizes and uses, um, civil and military, pilot ships, and travel through space, space to explore planets and gather resources to survive, featuring both creative and survival modes. So you've got that whole Minecraft kind of esque play where you can go and just do your own thing and build as much crazy stuff as you want, or you can make it really hard for yourself and survive. There is no limit to what you can be, to what can be built, utilized, and explored. Sweet. That's what's out this week. What's out next? What's coming soon? Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun. It's going to be out everywhere. It's out March 5th. There will be out March 5th. Diablo 4 is coming to Game Pass on March 28th, which we talked about. And I was trying to look it up, but Lightyear Frontier, which I'm personally excited for, is coming in March as well. So, coming real soon. There you go. It's all I, it's all I could find. Yeah, that <laughs> that's there as well at the moment light here frontier is there currently to download as well and make available so. mm -hmm. i can't wait okay anyways uh and so those are the that's what's coming soon those are the new game pass game announcements sean what is leaving sir so really quickly before i go into what is leaving uh, we always look at the perks every time we come around and and things like that the, we get like this nice hot drop of games from from Xbox. They always seem to drop like a couple of perks at the back. Um, if 
if you're like me and you can sometimes find the obviously all the pressures and stuff of life if you're a dad and you've got to work and you know all the responsibilities you have if you feel like that can sometimes get on top of you um you can claim um a free month trial offer with a really cool app which i have personally used in the past uh, to help me which is calm so you can get a premium free month trial offer for that um it helps with um guided meditation for sleep guided meditation for relaxing guided meditation for just de-stressing decompressing um and there's also now two ex- including so you can get uh two xbox um themed soundscapes from halo and sea of thieves so go nice. give that a try um it is great i like life can be really stressful and quite serious mm-hmm. um but it's, it's a great app i've used it before i've also used headspace but um you don't get we're talking about cam um because you can get a free month free trial with your xbox uh game pass old mode so i'm gonna do that i actually did not know i did not know about this at all you just you just taught me something i didn't know this was a thing you could do um and now i want it's really it's really i i've we used when so when Lindsay was giving birth to to logan bit of a squirrel moment in this here when she was giving birth to logan we did a lot. Of, we went to a guided meditation meditation class, and it's the only time I've ever been in a room full of adults who laid on the floor listening to somebody talk, and everybody fell asleep. Hmm. It was amazing. I didn't like, it, and it really like opened us up to like guided meditation. So, like, so like if we both mainly if we both really struggle sometimes, we will put something on that which helps us do the guided meditation. Then it'll be like we'll wake up at six o'clock in the morning and be like, I don't even remember falling asleep. This is great. And so the Game Pass perk is three free months of this Calm that has these guided meditations on. Yep. So there you go. You can go yep. play some crazy-ass game like Doom and then go do a guided meditation so that you can actually fall asleep to, to, after playing to master, it. Yeah. To, the, to the, um, the, the sounds of the Halo soundscapes, which is pretty cool. I mean, I don't understand how the Sea of Thieves soundscapes will work in that, but anyway. <laughs> Maybe next week you can tell us. Yeah, I might, I might in, just in the do pie chat. Anyway, Sean, what's leaving? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> what is leaving? So we're leaving February 29th. Um, Madden NFL 2022 is leaving everywhere via the EA Play, which makes sense because 2024 is coming, and I think 2023 is already there. So mm-hmm. you've got a selection of Madden NFL games to play. Uh, and Soul Hackers 2, that's also leaving everywhere. So that's both those games are leaving by February 29th. So what do you think about all this uh, new announcement, these new Trancher games, Sean? There's a lot. There is a lot to play. I would love to have a go at playing Bluey. I've always wanted to watch it, but my youngest, like Logan, is now a little bit too old for Bluey. Oh, mm. That's what he says anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'd like to play that. Uh, there's a lot of traction going on online uh, when they drop this uh, placard of games on X. A lot of people in the comments were saying that they, why can't we have Bolt Gun any sooner? Um, so people are looking forward to that. Man Eater is a solid game to return. Um, you know, it, it was fun. It was kind of just a little bit crazy. And I, I couldn't quite get my head around it completely the first time. Um, but it, it was a lot of fun to play. And then Space Engineers. I think Space Engineers would be a pretty good game for you to, to hone into that the whole sandbox style game i will certainly give it a go i'm a bit worried i i was excited about hardship space breaker hard space ship breaker i don't know i think all four of those (laughs) words are in the title in some form i was excited about that game and it was a little too minutia for me like i was like okay so and not that it's a bad game it just wasn't my cup of tea i'm a little worried that this is going to have that same minutiae type thing but uh, yeah, you're, you you've pegged it that I will certainly give it a try, and I will I will give an honest update on on what I think of it um, once I once I do that. So yeah, Space Engineers, that'll be a docket game for me when we get to that point. Uh, also, on a totally un doesn't matter, but I thought it was interesting. I didn't realize Bluey was a girl. Didn't know that was a thing. So she didn't know. No, that went over my head as well. I was like, yeah. really? Yeah. So um, I love the fame song. I just. There's there's so much about that program, like the the stuff that it hits on, like um, like the hidden messages in stuff. There's like there's a whole apparently there's a whole following on law for like spotting long dogs and stuff like that in episodes and stuff. So 
Yeah, I think uh, I think it's good a good group of games we got coming out. You know, it's a wide berth, a lot of different stuff for a lot of different people. So uh, that's always what you want. Not not every one of these games is probably going to be for you, but I'd be hard pressed that you couldn't find something coming out in this uh, in this stuff to uh, that you might you might be interested in. Um, anyways, I, I did miss my cue. Sorry about that. So Sean was talking about games leaving. Uh, and if you're interested in any of those games leaving, uh, Madden NFL 22 or Soul Hackers 2, uh, you have until February 29th to beat them or buy them for 20% with your Game Pass sub. Uh, work hard to beat NFL 22 in the next eight days. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's a lot of gameplay. (laughs) So on to the X feed, Sean. <laughs> Sorry, I, I was just I was reading something then and completely missed my cue. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, I don't think he's into it. I don't think he's gonna say his part. He's just like sitting there. He's like, eh, I'm done. Uh, uh, I can try no, to sorry. I can yeah. try to do it for you in like a UK voice. You know, like uh, no, I'd, I'd slaughter it and we'd lose any listeners you probably had. So I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> so, so sorry. So remember, if you are looking for any information um, on all the information about what's coming, what's going, what's hot in the in the world of Xbox Game Pass, you can find all that information out on our X channel, which is at Game Pass Tracker. Or if you just want to know dates and have links to games and videos, so you can see them on the like, uh, head over to GamePassNews.com uh, and use our website to find all that information. Sounds great. On to the X feed. It's the X feed where we talk about the top stories, new news, bulletins, and we end with a feature story, which I think you can kind of figure out what the feature story will be. But before we get to that, the feature. Uh, first, Xbox Cloud Gaming now accounts for at least 10% of overall Xbox playtime. Which, I don't know, isn't super surprising since it's pretty much every game comes to uh, xCloud now. In fact, I was just talking to you. I don't think Madden's ever been an xCloud game until this year. I don't know if that's true. And it makes... I'm not 100%... Well, Madden... Did we not just say that it's leaving console and PC for 2022? And I'm not sure about 2023. Um, But yeah, that, that is a pretty good... Uh, I'm looking it up. I'm just looking now. Oh, we're all looking at. So you can get that first. <laughs> yeah. So, but That's I mean, so I guess first. my point is, I am, I am not surprised because uh, everything's coming to X Cloud now, uh, and so I, I guess ten percent. I, I, I think it's interesting. I mean, if you look at it, you have Xbox, you have console, PC, and X and X Cloud. Those are your three. So, so. I mean, technically, you would think it would be closer to 33%, right? But we know that not that many people stream. So um, so it's hitting around 10% of, of what you would think of a, of a fair 33%. So I think yeah. that's cool. So now Madden... Go ahead. Madden has managed... It's got X Cloud save com- capabilities, but not, not able to play via the X Cloud. So, uh... But yeah, I agree. This... It doesn't surprise me. Like I am playing games like um I'd probably give Bluey a go via the cloud and things sure. like that. I would I would go for those kind of games. Um Man Eater would be one that I'd have possibly play by cloud. Um I know I've played playing Fortnite a little bit via the cloud just because I want to try and grab some skins and stuff like that. Um, but then when you get into your bigger games like Diablo, um, Dead Island, which is, you know, quite a fast paced game, I would probably steer away from playing on those via the cloud just cause it's just difficult to, you know, you fast paced games don't always run the best via the cloud. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I think cloud games are great, but what I think you really have to watch out for is the games like Sea of Stars. Um, those games that that don't allow you to save immediately, right? So, like, um, yeah. Sea of Stars, you had to get to a book, as I recall. I didn't. I only played a few hours of it, but it was like 
that was a problem for me. I I, in, I initially thought, oh, I'm just going to play this on cloud and I'll be good with that. But it was like, well, if I wasn't near a book, obviously, if you're on cloud, you don't have the ability to do the the the, resu- the resume. And so it doesn't work like or it does, but you have to save first. And if you don't have time to get to a save before you have to exit out, then you lose all your stuff. So you're right. Fast paced games or games that don't just auto save are not ideal X cloud games, to be honest. And I mean, our our Game Pass Tracker social account um, actually did a poll of people asking people if they played, um, if they use the X Cloud. And a lot of people in that said no. I can't remember the exact results for it, but a lot of people said no. I was one of the people that said yes, because I do use it. I use it quite often if I'm just, if I want to dabble, even on the Xbox, if I would just want to dabble in a game and see if it's something that I'll enjoy, I won't da- sit there and wait for it to download, especially if it's like 10, 11 gig. Because I could yeah. be sat there for like half an hour waiting, yeah. so I'll fire it up on the cloud. It's usually it's pretty much fast access. It's you know because it is a great service for that. Um, I'll play it a little bit, and I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I like this game. Then I'll I'll set it downloaded while I continue to play it via the cloud because you know they allow it to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it, it's just a really really good service for that. And then the fact that. Like you say, most games now have that auto save feature, so you can go away with it, and you know it uses the whole X Cloud thing, so you can you know you can play on the move. It's automatically saving. You come back to your console, the, the cloud sync up, and it, which, depending on your internet access, is pretty instant. You don't even notice it happening, um, and then just carry on where you left off. It's almost like the whole Switch thing, where you can be playing on your backbone via your, your phone. Mm-hmm. The auto save features worked. You you think like, oh, I'm going to go play this actually on the TV. You can turn X Cloud off, turn your Xbox on, and then carry on from your last you know auto save. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say that I have recent. I'm not surprised that the number is rising because I can tell you that I have been recently. Um, when I jump on, I have a line, not a long line, not a super long wait. I don't think I've ever waited more than like five minutes. But there is a wait for me to, like, get in the server thing. Um, And I have said this once before. I can't remember how long ago. But stop showing me, I don't know any way to say it, the rocket penis, and let me do something fun. Okay? Like, if you're going to make me wait five minutes to get into my freaking game, let me play something. Like, put old school Pong, or I don't care, anything on the screen that I can goof around with while I'm waiting. Like, this does not seem difficult. This seems like something that somebody should have been like, yeah, that makes sense. Let's do that. So Was was it Ridge Racer Revolution in the past that when you couldn't, when the game was loading, you played um, Pac-Man for a little bit because it was Bandai and Emco? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Let me, yeah. like, let me let me fly the rocket around or something. I don't know. Like, let me do something. I, I just I, don't, I just don't get it. But whatever. Uh, maybe that would take too much thought from the servers or something to make that happen. Yeah. Although it doesn't seem. I mean, even true. Google has it. When you when you don't get internet access or something doesn't work, you can play that T Rex game where you have to jump over stuff. Yes. Do as simple anything. as that. Yeah. yeah. Do anything like that. Like it's just dumb to be like, yeah, you got five minutes here. You just watch this rocket fly in one direction forever, and it's just I don't know, whatever. Um. So that's my only complaint there. But other than that, yeah, it's a great service. I am not. Have you ever played a game to completion on it, Sean? Um, I would say I've played a game from start to finish in full completion, but I played eighty. I completed eighty percent of Wreckfest via the cloud. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. The only game that I can think of, and I might be getting the name wrong. I think it's Twelve Minutes. I don't know if that's the right name oh, or not. Yeah. It was a long. It was quite a while ago. But you could beat it pretty quick. It was a game where you came in and you're and you got like attacked immediately, and it was kind of like a, a narrative story roguelite. That is the only game I've ever completed on XCloud. Other than that, I use it as like a sampler, basically, to be like, do I want to download this? Which I think is what they want, right? Because if you play too long, or not too long, but if you play for quite a while, what do they tell you? If you're on the console, at least on the console, they're like, hey, do you want to download this? Because you know you've been playing for a while, so just thought you might want to download. It. Just hit the just hit the button if you want to download it. Which is what I think they want you to do. Um, so, I, so maybe I'm using it exactly how Xbox intends or hopes. Um, you know, Bruce has a great 
point here. How long is xCloud going to be in beta? Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's is it in beta or on the console? I thought it was beta, but I could be wrong. Okay, I goes, yeah, I, I, I'd have to look into that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think, oh, I don't know. Even in the Xbox podcast, they didn't really allude to the chain, that change happening soon. So, but I'm just like, it's get, it's growing arms and legs and it's getting bigger. More people are using it, more game. Most games are now becoming available to it. So, well, that's old. yeah. When would it move away from that? Yeah, it makes I was, sense to do it soon. I was trying to figure, oh, yeah, yeah, xbox.com, xcloud gaming beta on xbox.com. So yeah, it's yeah. Xbox is still considering it in beta. So yeah, um, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I think it's an easy way. Yeah, on their main site, it says cloud gaming, and then it has beta. Um, I think it's an easy way when there's hiccups or snafus for a company to be able to be like, well, maybe, you know, it's just, it's just beta. I mean, we're not, we're, not, we're still working out the bugs. Give us a break, okay? You know, I mean. <laughs> It may just be that way forever. Yeah, just that way. <laughs> yeah. um, like, well, it's maybe as they get closer to having more dedicated servers. So, like, they, like I said, the wait time they can kind of say because you know it's a beta. We don't have as many dedicated servers, so people do have to wait. They they can get away with that. But I'm assuming as it gets bigger and they push it more, that they will probably you know dedicate more hardware servers for that purpose maybe maybe yeah i could see that um all right well that's enough about xcloud we're done with you xcloud 10 percent people using it we're one of them but not all the time uh multiple games announced for xbox following the nintendo partner showcase um but none of them for game pass correct at this moment so um another crab's treasure is the only one at the moment. <gasps> but still my heart. I was excited about that one. I didn't even know that. Freaking A. That's awesome. Yeah. I uh, will be playing that game. I would love the uh, Epic Mickey to come oh, yeah. to Game Pass as well. Yeah. So, as well as the Star Wars Battlefront uh, Classic Collection. But I can't see that happening. Yeah, probably not. But so would our good friend Bruce, I bet. Um, so here's the seven yeah. games. Um, Contra... Disney, Epic, Mickey, these are games that were announced on Nintendo's Partner Showcase, but are also coming to Xbox. Not Game Pass, just Xbox. Uh, Contra, Operation Galaga, Disney, Epic, Mickey, Rebrushed, Penny's Big Breakaway. Uh, that game has me kind of like, eh, maybe. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei, V Vengeance, sure. Star Wars Battlefront, and Sword Art Online, Fractured Daydream. The one that's coming to Game Pass is, as Sean said, another Crab's Treasure, which is like the... Uh, uh, d colorful dead dark dead souls. Why? Why can I think? <laughs> can't think of the name. Dark Souls. Dark Souls game. Like I don't know. Anyways, whatever. Um, it's the really hard game that you play as a crab, but it's colorful, but it's hard, and you got to find things to put over your butt to protect you. There you go. Now I've said it. Uh, Elden Ring. Like Elden. Ring. Yeah, is it Dark Souls? Right. Right. Someone say yes. Just just yeah, put me out of yeah, my misery. Somebody yeah. just take the shot. I agree. <laughs> I agree. Um, so there you go. So not everything is all for Nintendo that was on the partner showcase. That's what we're trying to get at. Uh, Sean, what what are what are the Xbox fans disappointed about? I I'm confused. So there's two games that are coming out from uh, Capcom and Bandai Namco that the Game Pass people were kind of really hoping would come to xbox and game pass because it's going to other platforms so they were really hoping that this like it would come to it uh one of them is so capcom's monster hunter stories uh would have been an absolute treat to get um on on game pass because it's um the, you know the whole i get this right the whole eastern side of things like they've been making um games more available for people in, in in like in China and that's that the eastern side of the world. Um, so Monster Hunter Stories is a big game that's getting a lot of traction out there for that. 
Um, I think it's coming to it's coming to Nintendo, it's coming to Steam, it's coming to PlayStation, um, but it's not coming to any of the Xbox platforms, which is what people were really upset about. And then Bandai Namco's Gundam Evolution 4 is the second game, and people were like, "Why aren't these coming to the Xbox platforms? You you know you're trying to work really hard with Eastern companies, um, you know to to bring games for those." out there that, that like those style of games. You know, we're getting the whole Final Fantasy that's coming. Um, what was the one in the developer direct that people were really excited for? That eludes me. Uh, yeah, it was the one that's anyways, not coming. I can't think of it either. Um, but there's, Yeah, it was a yeah. surprise drop. It was the one that just, like, you know, the, they brought into one side. I'll look it up. You keep going. Um but yeah, so they're bringing more games in like that, and people are kind of like, why Why are they doing the whole, why are those two games skipping the platform altogether? Now, I don't know if that's because we've started to get more comfortable with the fact that most games are coming to the Xbox platform as well as Game Pass, or if, you know, we were just getting greedy. Yeah, we're just getting greedy. I mean, I mean, you know, we now feel like everything, we now feel like we're entitled to every freaking thing uh, that's coming, uh, to be honest. Um, so, you yeah. know, it just is, you know, it is what it is. Plus, I think maybe there's a little bit of like, well, we got stuff going away. Now we need uh, more stuff should be coming, you know, I mean, not going away, but we have exclusives that are now no longer exclusive. So now those exclusives shouldn't be exclusives either. They should be on our platform. I think it's a little bit of that. Um, but that's okay. Uh, and it's visions of mana. That's the one that, that, um, there you that go. We visions of mana. Oh, that, see, that got a lot of excitement across mm-hmm. Twitter. So, yeah, I was excited about it. Uh, and I, that's still on my list of possible buys, to be honest. Uh, haven't, haven't bought a game yet this year for Xbox, so uh, that that's on my list as a possibility. Um, so there you go. But that is the end of our top stories. Uh, on to our news bulletins. Pal World hits a ridiculous player milestone in just one month. I believe it's 25 million. Is that what I saw? Over all platforms? Yeah, over all platforms. So Steam and Xbox. 25 million. Yeah, 25 yeah. million players. 15, 15 million players on Steam, 10 million players on Xbox. Yep. That is an absolute mind-blowing amount of people playing that game. Yeah, for sure. So. And uh, Pokemon, I still say, is scratching their head saying, you know, you know, maybe. Maybe we need to look at something here that we can bring in. Um, and they're going to bring in grenade launchers. No, I'm just kidding. Probably not. Uh, Xbox Series <laughs> X is reduced to as low as 359.99 pounds in the latest UK deal, which is $1,000 American. Just kidding. Um, I don't really know what it is. <laughs> don't listen to me. Five more of Xbox's rare classics are now available for Switch Online. Is this the start of all... Is this what? What are you asking here, Sean? I can't. Well, I'm trying to read it. All so a, oh, we, all getting a we long, always say things I like, see. yeah, so Rare very rarely um, allow their games to go out and about cross-platform. So, like, we had Rare Replayer that was available with the Xbox 360, which then carried over into the Xbox One, uh, which, you know, you got, like, games like Banjo and Kazooie, all the Viva Pinata-style games. So, it was interesting to see those games from Rare moving, you know, coming out of hibernation, basically, and being struck onto the NSO kind of thing. Um, part of me hopes that maybe some of those will come across onto the Xbox and, you know, we'll be able to play them on the Xbox as well one day. Um, but we shall see. But, like, you know, Battletoads, Killer Instinct, the original, Blast Corps, uh, you know, 64, and then Snake, Growl, and Roll, which is my all-time favorite game as a kid. It's like your most exciting part of the Partner Direct, I think. You were, like, super pumped. Yep, I was. I haven't played that game in... in, uh, Oh, wow. I haven't played that game in a hell of a long time. Marble Madness um, and Snake, Growl, and Roll and Zombie Ate My Neighbors were, like, my three favorite games as a kid. Well, now they're available. There you go. Actually, I want to play Snake Rattle and Roll because I don't think I've ever played it, and you were so excited about it. I, I actually meant to play it before uh, we got here. Uh, I was going to do that today, but it never. I didn't get to it. Um. So, but we will. If you're interested, we will give our partner direct thoughts at the, in the party chat here. That's our plan. Just so you know, I know we've touched on it because, well, because it, 
in fact, some of the Microsoft stuff. Speaking of our feature story, the Xbox podcast, the official Xbox podcast, which I know you're surprised. It's not us, but it is uh, <laughs> Phil. And uh, so on the official Xbox podcast was Phil, Sarah Bond, Matt Booty, and and it was hosted by Tina Amini, who I listened to like a bazillion times on Game Scoop. Was really exciting. I, I've seen her. She's been in some other like uh, showcase announcements. But if you're a, if you're a Game Scoop fan, you know her. Uh, we she had she had left IGN and said she was moving to uh, Xbox to do some stuff. She's like I said, popped in and out hosting some stuff for a showcase. But I thought that was pretty cool that she got to host uh, the the three big dogs talking about some really serious stuff. Uh, she deserves that. So kudos to her. Um, and so they gave their thoughts on uh, on the Xbox state. It's like an Xbox state of play almost or um, state of the union. That's what I meant to say. Xbox state of the union of like what's going on, what's happening. So the, four, the three of them got together. The first thing they get out of the way is, yes, there is four titles going to other platforms. Right. Yep. Which we we now have those confirmed as well. Which those titles are? They didn't at the time. They were kind of holding those quite like uh, holding them close to the chest. But we've now had them confirmed that Pentiment is going to be going to PlayStation Four and PlayStation Five, and the Switch on mm-hmm. February twenty second. Hi Fi Rush is going to play uh, PS Five as of March nineteenth. Grounded is going to hit the PS4, the PS5, and the Switch on April 16th. And Sea of Thieves is going to be joining the PlayStation 5 network as of April 30th. I might be double dipping on Grounded <laughs> on the Switch. I'm not, I'm not Ooh. even lying. I might be double dipping on Grounded. Y'all, you got to give it a try. It is so good. Like, like just, just try it on Game Pass for a hot second. I loved it. I can totally see myself playing this game upstairs while we're watching some random show um so yeah. i and it'd be interesting as well because you would get you would be going into it on the switch and it's like at, at it's 1.0 or 1.1 level because that's you know you didn't you played it in game preview it's now out of game preview and it's a full-fledged launch so mm-hmm. wait i say that but can game. i do cross saves that's the thing like that's the thing i didn't get a yes or a no of. so uh that yeah. I don't want to have to rebuild my mushroom tower. I spent a lot of time on my mushroom castle, y'all. It, it can like zip line to pretty much any side of the map. It's it's amazing. Um, so that's one piece. But anyways, the, and move, moving on in the Xbox podcast, I got a little I got a little too into the, that. I could talk a lot about that. Um, but they did say that it's not. Why did they, okay? Here's why I think they did this. I was going to ask, but here's why I think they did this. I think that Nintendo locked down the deal to have their partner showcase before these games were announced. They got the right to announce the two that they that they had um, gotten to go on their platform. And that's why I think, for some reason, I don't know why it was that they got to do that, because even Phil said, hey, listen, you know, these teams have the ability to, or have their own plans on how to announce things, so I don't want to ruin uh, the, the teams and how they're doing that. And I think that was his way of saying, uh, we're giving these two games to Nintendo, and you'll find out in a little bit how that's all rolling out. But so I think for that reason, they couldn't say what the four games were, but they wanted to make sure that everybody knew it wasn't Starfield and it wasn't, and it wasn't Indiana Indi- Jones, Indiana Jones. Exactly. So they got that out of the way and they're yeah. like, listen, four games, but not those two community games, which I was pretty sure is grounded. Um, and then some games that he said were never really meant to be exclusives on a platform anyway, which I take to mean Hi-Fi Rush, really. Yeah. Um. So, but you know what people are now, what Xbox community members are now doing is kind of like wiping their brow, being like, "Whew! All right, Starfield still here, y'all. Starfield, Starfield isn't free and clear, not going to some place at some point. It's just at the moment not slated to go. But I guarantee you, right now, if they get the right offer." To send to send oh, yeah. Starfield, it it'll be put on the docket. That's that's my personal thought. See, I I see these four games as a test bed. Mm-hmm. Like you've got a really good mix of games there that are going away. 
Uh, Hi-Fi Rush, you know, was a game of the year winner. Um, Pentiments, a little bit of a hit and miss kind of thing. Grounded is a fantastic game. A lot of people enjoyed it in game preview on Game Pass, so it got some good traction and a lot of hype on streaming platforms for people that were playing it because of the you know, how close it was to Honey Ash with kids and like the gameplay style and stuff like that it was really fun. And the multiplayer aspect of it, because I mean, we played it multiplayer and it was a good laugh. Um, mm-hmm. So for me, they have they're sending four very different games out to test the waters to see how well they're received on the other platforms, and then after that, it'll just be next after next after next. So, yep, yep, for sure. I I think you're 100 percent right. Um, then the one thing that really like made me jump, and I was like, whoa, that's huge. Um. I think it was Sarah Bond who said, you don't need to worry. Game Pass will only be available on Xbox, and Xbox games will continue to come to it day one. Which, the day one thing, sure, I mean, I, I would have been, that would have made me jump more. But there's always been this thought by the community, by podcasters, that maybe you'll get a Nintendo Game Pass that'll have like Nintendo centric games that aren't coming on the platform on it. But basically, they said, no, that's not happening. Game Pass is here and only here, which seems completely different from what they wanted to do like three years ago, four years ago. Four years ago, Phil said, yeah, but go ahead. But is that, is, is, Game Pass as its core going to be on Xbox only and are they still allowing the cloud-based stuff to maybe reach out one day? Yeah, that's possible. They didn't, really, they, they didn't delve in, into information on that. They just said that Game Pass is, always, is only going to be on Xbox or PC if you're a PC Game Pass player. Yeah, I mean, that that is a possibility, but I still view this as a total change from what they're... Uh, it, and I mean that's fine. That's business. That's what you do. So I'm not. I'm not. Uh, if anything, I'm. I'm cheering them on. Do what you got to do to move with the uh, with the ecosystem that you're in. Um, but three or four years ago, it was. Hey, listen. If you want an Xbox game, then you get the Xbox ecosystem. We're not going to piecemeal games anymore. Phil said that. Kind of specifically talking about Nintendo, and and now it's like. You know what? You want a game? You want to pay us for a game? Then you got a game. That's fine. But you're not getting is our gem, our prize trophy, which is Game Pass. That's staying here. It's like they totally flipped it, which is fine. Whatever makes them money and whatever gives them the best future. That's what I say. Yeah. I uh, I thought it was really interesting that the body language between the three of them. So whenever they were talking about something that was quite a heavy hitter, like like that Xbox being uh, Game Pass only being on Xbox and like trying when they were going through what games were going to be on other platforms. There was a lot of looking at each other and getting nods of approval from like Matt was nodding to Phil as if to say, yep, that's okay. And Sarah was doing the same. She was constantly looking between the two for, you know, to make sure that she was staying on the same track. I thought that was very interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I also really like that because I like the fact that all three of them are on the same wavelength. Not There wasn't one of them that felt like they wanted to engage the conversation in a certain direction. So whether that, that was really well rehearsed or it's just the, the feeling that they have as a leadership group for, for Xbox and Microsoft gaming. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, so uh, Nia, Prime, uh, Nia Prime of uh, the dads, the Nintendo dad says, uh, uh, company Nintendo already said no to Game Pass. PlayStation is probably like, Heck no. <laughs> um, I uh, I don't know. I I don't know. I maybe maybe that's the. I mean yes they yes I I think yes a hundred percent they said no. Uh, it's interesting to see if they went back to the to the boardroom and said okay we need to make money we so uh, we tried to you know we 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 tried to to shill a, a product that nobody wants on their platform for. A myriad of reasons, not because it's not a good product, but because it's so good, it would probably interfere with their software sales. Um, so then they just went back to the to the drawing board and said, 
what can we sell? How do we do this? And they were willing to uh, to to find a way to make cash off of their exclusives, which I think makes a lot of sense. I, I mean, I, yeah. I don't know how much the community seems to have calmed down a bit. I don't know how much of the community is still up in arms about this, but I don't, I don't have a problem with any of this. I think it's great. Yeah, um, I've, I, I, I'm still hesitant to say that Game Pass is going to be across other platforms, um, even as a cloud-based thing, because you've got Nintendo that are doing NSO, which are bringing their back catalog of games from uh, the NES, the. SNES, the N64, uh, the Game Boy Advance, they're bringing all those. Fingers crossed one day they do GameCube. Um, so they have their own basically subscription service. You pay a yearly fee for this. Um, you get access to extra games which you can play at any time, anywhere you want. So they're doing their own thing. PlayStation have their own subscription basis kind of thing. I know they're kind of uh, uh, well, the feeling I get is they're not completely sold on it as much as Xbox is sold on trying sure. to push Game Pass. But they still have their own thing. So they're definitely not going to want to bring Xbox's ecosystem via Game Pass to their to their platform. It's just right. not going to make sense. If you're trying to build your own thing, why would you bring, to me, the more, the more dominant service to your platform? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um. So you had mentioned that you thought it was interesting that they mentioned uh, specifically Roblox and Fortnite. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that they went they went down the the element of the free to play games as one of their learning experiences and how they're going to approach for games further in the future, which then made me think of Halo. And are they going to do like a really big PvP style battle royale Halo where you know you like in Fortnite you've got you know the whole racing kind of thing that's going off. Mm, you've got mm-hmm. the um, music stage thing. You've got the Lego aspect of it. Are they going to go along with like Halo and be like, right, okay, let's do Halo Royale. And, you know, it's a huge hundred people map thing of all different Spartans or Covenant or different skins for different people. You, you know, you can just have normal militant skin, military skins as well as, you know, you could be a grunt, you could be, you know, all those different kind of things. Are they going to try and do that with things like Halo or even Doom? Because oh, Doom, oh, that would be so amazing. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, doing that. Or even just a, an Xbox Royale. If they, you know, they could turn around and go, okay, you can be, we've got Activision, so you could come in as freaking Crush Bandicoot if you wanted to be, or, you know, all that kind of stuff. They've got the, the licensing to Guitar Hero because of Activision. So, you know, the festival stage thing that Fortnite are doing, they could turn around and be like, hey, look, we can do this with Guitar Hero because we own the licensing to that. Let's figure out how we can do a free-to-play kind of thing with Guitar Hero where people, you know, you, we do a battle pass thing where you've got to play through it. You've got to get certain scores on certain songs and you can unlock more and you can, you know, build your own avatar with different skins we can get different skins for like your guitars and all your different equipment and stuff like that bring out whole different hardware with drums and things because you know they had uh they had drum kits in guitar hero there was the, the use of microphones there was the use of guitars you know they had um the dj one as well dj hero so you can like you could bring there's a whole host of different stuff hardware wise they could do and they could bring it all in free to play where you you know you purchase the controller but the game is free and i don't know there's mm-hmm. there's so many different directions they could there go is. in it was really loose term saying that they were going to ref, reference in how roblox and fortnite worked and how they wanted to further do their games it was just mm-hmm. like what kind of box are you opening here sarah because you know this could go anywhere yeah yeah no i uh yeah, it, it'd be interesting. And I think that's part of the thing they're trying to figure out, right? Like like having Activision now and having Game Pass and having all these things and they're all they're trying to figure out how to get their arms around it and how to best maximize the the gaming potential and the profit potential. And I I think they're just like, okay, how do we do this? Like like how how do we do this best? 
and they're trying to figure that out. So it'll be interesting to see what they land on and how successful it is. Um, keeping keeping moving here. Uh, they they talked about they're looking into the cross play cross save uh, as fundamentals. I think those are I think I agree with them 100, percent especially cross save, but also cross play. But I I need <laughs> to be able to jump from my Xbox to if it's on the Switch to my Switch and play the same thing like with Grounded. Am I going to buy Grounded? Not if it's not cross save. I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not I'm not going to restart it. But if you tell me Grounded is cross save, I I will buy it. I will buy it as soon as it's on the Switch. Well, th- th- this for me leans into the, the Roblox and Fortnite thing because you can play Roblox on the Xbox, you can play it on your iPad, you can play it on your Switch, but you sign in via your Roblox account. Um, and that links all of the information across them. It's the same with Epic. You sign in with your Epic account mm-hmm. and you link that to your Switch account and you link it to your Xbox account. So you can... Like, everything that you unlock on one thing is readily available for you to use on another. So are they going to go and do something like that? Like you can sign into your Xbox account on the switch and we will link any cloud save stuff to that. Not the games, just the, the save files. What if they did a game? What if, what if you could sign <laughs> up for game pass as for your cross save? save. Yeah. As your cross save. <laughs> and so, <laughs> See, yeah. Yeah, you could you could totally do that. Be like, just listen, a low price. Yeah, yeah. You can buy it on Switch and you can play it on Switch without without um without Game Pass without a Game Pass sub. That's fine. I get it. Or if you have a Game Pass sub, then you can sign into your Game Pass sub, and then you'll have the cross save between the platforms. And they could totally do yeah. that, uh, and it would make sense. Uh, you have to sign up to Microsoft and Microsoft sign up to a Microsoft account. And we will automatically transfer your save file across because you've gone and bought that game on the Switch. So you've paid us, you've paid money for our game on that platform. So we will give you the ability to have your cloud save stuff on there, but you need to go and make a Microsoft account. And like in the hope that one day, like they might be able to email you and say, hey, look, why don't you try Game Pass for like a dollar for, for, for a month? And, yeah. You know, See how you feel playing this, and then like you, you kind of suck it in there because it got you on the reel. They're like, "Hey, look, we've got all these awesome games. Come and play them." So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's very much a possibility that they're looking at some version of that, but it'll be interesting what they settle what they settle on. Uh okay. Finally, then finally, they announced that Diablo March twenty eighth, which we already talked about, is coming to Game Pass and further ABK titles coming too. People, in my predictions, I missed this by a gosh darn month. I mentioned this game and I said February. Should have said March <laughs> by a month. I expect yeah, well, some you, amount of points for this when wanna, it gets down to it, Sean. Do you want a technical? Okay, so like, give yourself half the points because the fact that it was announced in February, it was very close for the announcement. So I, I would give you half the points. All right, I'm, 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 I'm. You're marking this episode, so I remember that when we get down to the uh, nitty gritty of giving out of doling out points for 2024 predictions. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I they Phil has come out and said, you know that that they are. Um, what's the word I'd like to use? Um, you know, they, tired. they have sorry, they have re. I'm quite tired. They have reiter- re- reiterated that they are going to be trying to bring the Activision back catalog to Game Pass. So, you know, that, and that's possibly going to include Call of Duty. I probably will include Call of Duty. Oh, yeah. It's a no-brainer to bring such yeah. a massive title to your service. Um, it's just, I'm assuming that we haven't seen that yet because there is still stuff going off in the background with the FTC and things like that. So I'm assuming that this is going to be something that comes out at a later date. I know, I know this is not popular to say, but I'm very excited. I waited on this game because I figured it would be coming one of the first games. So I feel vindicated. I know some people are like, you should, you you should give the people the money. Well, I did. So, um, so then they also went on to talk about a couple of other things, like 34 million Game Pass members. So, 34 million Game Pass members. Your minimum price is 7.99 a month. 
So that's a lot of pounds and pences, mm -hmm. dollars and cents coming the old way. Yep. Um, which is, I think, is fantastic. Um, and that's across everything PC, cloud, and console. So, you know, that you're going to have people like me that are paying the full shibai. You know, people that aren't pay paying the full price, but it's still, you know, they're still taking the, the cash out away from you to be a subscriber. And I think that's great. It's great. It's growing. Uh, I think it's the first number we've seen for a while from them as well. So, mm -hmm. and then, uh, they say they're the, the 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 largest publisher across different platforms. Phil says the best way to grow is to improve the experience for the players they already is to not improve the experience for players they already have, but to expand the brand to more players everywhere. Um, and then the part the part that I want to get to because uh, I know we we've kind of been on this one a bit long. Um, they said, Phil says, hardware is still important role, which is very important to the Xbox community because Lord knows everybody thought they were folding up and just being a software company, a la Sega. Hardware is still an important role to them as they believe that it, that is where the player has the best experience of Xbox. Um, and that new hardware is to come this holiday, heavy work into next gen with the biggest leap in technology ever i don't know what does that mean to you sean that to me means that, that we are going to be and i have this conversation with somebody at work the other day um this to me means that they are sitting and waiting and um is it amd they're kind of trying to come away from uh, as the graphics developer the graphics uh, person that they use um tells me that they're going to come away from that and they're going to go to a different graphics company because it, you know it, there's a graphic there's graphics cards out as far as amd goes they are they suck up a lot of power and stuff like that and that's probably where you struggle you to get them in a box that you can have at home as a console a decent size that you can hide away because people do hide them away i mean mine's hidden away behind the tv but people mm -hmm. there's not many people in a normal home that would have their console out on display like a PC player would have their PC on display and they have all the RGB lights and stuff and the fans that light up and they like people who own a console tend not to have them on display. They sit in a TV cabinet or they sit somewhere else out of the way. Um, so it's not seen. So to get all that technology into a tiny small space and it still be fantastic and, and not draw too much power because you know you don't want to be hindering people's power consumption and costing them more money to be running this product. Um, they're going to look into into different graphics card providers and CPU providers and stuff like that. And I think we're going to end up seeing uh, like an 8K, when it goes to the biggest loop, I think we're going to go from the Series X that it is now to the highest end PC rig that you can get in a console. And I think that's going to be the big leap. They're like going mm. full. Here you go. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. I just, you've been saying this for a while. And this is how you wanted them to go out with this gigantic PC thing. I just don't know that the games are even taking advantage of the current hardware. So I'm confused, like, how they're going to be able to take advantage of whatever this next hardware would be that would be the biggest leap ever. I mean, so I'm assuming we're talking 8K here, which means that file sizes are going to be 55 teraflops. And I mean, it's like, I don't I don't know. Like, I, I mean, I'm here to see it, but I'm skeptical. I'm skeptical on what this looks like, on how it plays out, on the fact that game sizes are going to be so large, they're not going to fit on one hard drive, and they're probably going to take 15 years to make. I um, mean, they already take like a decade. I, I just, I just don't know. I think the hardware is a mile ahead of the software development. And I think that's the problem at the moment. Like, like to get a game that runs well and plays well and, and takes advantage of the graphics and the, the, all the stuff and the bits and the 
bites and the flops. It's just like, I mean, look at how long these games take now. I just, I just don't know if that's the leap that they're talking about here. But I'm interested to see what it is. See, I think differently. I think Starfield would have come out a lot sooner if they didn't have to scale it back to fit on a console. And that you can take that as a you, can, you people can come at me with that part, but I believe that they hit a roadblock with Starfield, so it didn't hit its original date because they were struggling to scale it back, so it ran nicely on a console. I have seen people playing that game on PC, and I have a friend that plays it on PC, and he's shown me screenshots and stuff like that, and the game looks absolute like gold on his PC so, and so, runs so sweet. So you th- you're thinking they've already maxed out the software? Or yep. the hardware? I've, I'm sorry, I've, the hardware? I believe, yeah. I believe it's at a point where they are struggling for the power consumption and all the heating and things like that inside the console to be able to run this thing at its absolute true potential, which is why I'm saying AMD is the is the graphics card um, maker for Xboxes. I think that's why they're steering away from those because they they draw so much power. They and obviously, mm-hmm. whatever you're drawing lots of power, you're creating lots of heat, so you need larger cooling. So if you want to fit fantastic stuff in a smaller box, you need stuff that's not drawing as much power so you don't have to do as much heating so it's not noisy in the home people want their console to run quietly so it's not there like worrying away like i play um if i play falls and motorsport for a while on my my series x it, it, you can hear it you can physically hear the like the, the fan wearing up and getting louder behind the tv to the mm-hmm. point where i'm like i can hear that over the engine sound sometimes and that to me <laughs> Other than the fact that I had to clean my Xbox out the other day, but that to me has the you know it's pulling a lot of power to 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 deal with the graphics needs of the of the game. All right. Well, I'm interested. I'm here. I'm here for whatever they do. Um, I'd really like my teeny my teeny Microsoft Xbox X, please. But probably not. Oh, gonna... I I think they're going to make a an array of stuff. So I think they're going to lean into the handheld. I don't know you don't like talking about that much because we talk about it quite a lot, but I think they're going to lean into the handheld. I think they're going to go with something that allows people to stream via the cloud directly. I think they're going to build on the cloud stuff quite heavily. Um, but then I also think they're going to, because like they say, they, the best experience they can get is on an Xbox. I think they are going to try and make an absolute banger of a console that people are going to be blown away with. And I think the Series X was a try at that, but it came late in the game compared to how PCs and stuff are running at the moment. I think PCs at the moment are at a stop um, and they're awaiting different things to happen in the hardware side of stuff um, for like manufacturers and things like that. I think they're at a stop now where it's giving the console market a bit of time to catch up I like it. I'm down for it. Um, the last thing I'll say, they mentioned uh, there is a June showcase, and that's where you'll learn more, basically. So, <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which I'm excited for because I'd, I'd be interested to see how the back end of this year is going to look. Mm-hmm. So the, the developer direct gave us everything to kind of tide us over for the summer. So a June showcase to show us like what cool stuff's coming out in the year, if there's going to be any new hardware, as well as new games. So it will be interesting. Yeah, I I mean, I would be interested in what what this June showcase has. Because you say, like, the the Developer Direct gets us... The Developer Direct was really through the, the entirety of the year. Like, I mean, those games are... are, There's some, some in fall... Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're they're sprinkled throughout. That's my point. They're not they're not like yeah. they're not like the next six months. In fact, really, there's only one in the next six months, and that's uh, Senua Saga. Uh, the rest are actually the fall, the summer, sometime in 2024 for uh, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. So, uh, 
yeah, I don't know. I'll be interested to see what they do in June. What are, what are they showing off? Are they going to show just show off more of a vowed and Ara history untold and Indiana Jones? I'm sure we'll see those. But what else do they show in there? I mean, obviously they usually show like 50 games, some crazy amount. So, but uh, but yeah, anything else before we jump off this, Sean? Any last words? Um, no, I I'm just you know. Oh, sorry. Yeah, one last thing. They were on about like backwards compatibility and stuff like that. So they were making sure that people, because they've invested in games and the save files and stuff like that, they were heavily invested in and respecting people who had invested in Xbox. So they're as invested in keeping those games available and those saves available to you for as long as they can possibly do it. So I thought that was nice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, on to the dashboard. Uh, Sean, what have you been playing? So, as I said at the beginning of the podcast, um, I would talk about Dead Island 2. Um, I've been playing that. I played it for about two hours this evening. Um, interesting start to the game. You were in, like, an airplane crash. Um, this isn't on an island, as it's alluded to in the title. Dead Island was on an island. It was kind of like a party island that you was on. Um, so far, I've been in Los Angeles. I've been in Hollywood. Huh. Okay. Uh, there is an element of it feeling a little bit open worldy, but at the same time, you, there's, there's places I can't get into yet because I'm assuming there's side quests and other quests that I need to do to get key cards to get into celebrities' homes and things and pieces like that. Um, the game's funny. Um, come across a character that seems like a Hugh Hefner style character where he was having a huge party in his mansion and everybody got mauled by zombies apart from him as he was picking them off from the roof with a rifle. Um, the, the skills tree is a little bit different to normal. Um, I don't know how I unlock the, the card slots, but every time you level up, you just get a new card and you can swap and change them in. Um, but I'm assuming as I get further through the main quest, more slots will be available and things like that. Um, usual range of weapons for melee stuff. So there's from wrenches to bits of wood to samurai swords to Wolverine style claws that I've unlocked um, to play with. You can add elements of fire, electricity and stuff like that. You can play with different elements. So you can kind of like chuck a big jug of water out and then, you know, over cables and stuff like that, and then I'll watch the zombies. It's a fun game. Um, after playing Dying Light, Dying Light Two, though, um, I feel like Dead Island Two is a little bit slow paced compared to that. But Dying Light was a free running zombie smashing kind of game, so very different. Yeah, and you said uh, much better game, Dying Light, than uh... yeah, Dying Light. It, it is. Um, it's not nice to say because it's not like to, to beat on a game much. But yeah, Dying Light 2, if you want a fast-paced, parkour style game that is a little bit dark and scary and, and things like that, as well as just happy-go-lucky smash zombies over the head, um, Dying Light 2 is a lot better. You can maim the zombies better on Dying Light 2. It sounds awful when we're talking about this. But like, if you aim at a target limb, so like if you aim for the leg, you can chop a leg off in Dying Light 2 quicker than you can in Dead Island 2. You kind of like, I was <laughs> beating the living daylights out of this zombie's leg and it wasn't doing anything. It was just like it, taking hit points off. I was like, I want to take its leg off. I don't. So <laughs> I want to see if I can do that. Um, sure. What I will say though is if you are mauling a zombie with a wrench and you're hitting it in the head like the skin will disappear from where you've hit it and then like the jar will start to flop around and stuff so the the, the detail in in the damage you deal is pretty cool quite funny i love how you rate i love how you rate zombie games like well you know i mean uh in the uh in the rated of how do you maim this or maul this zombie uh you know that that's just how it goes well i was hit, seven I, for that is, i was hitting one with <laughs> Yeah, I hit one with a rake earlier, and it like it left like a rake mark across its back, and I thought, okay, yeah, fair enough. Well, all right, all right, there you go. You're still I sucked into Fortnite, been... it looks like. 
<laughs> loads of Fortnite, yes. <laughs> um, I have, I finished the turtle stuff now. I've got maybe a couple bits of ooze left to get, but I have got all the collectibles that you can get um, for the, the turtle skins. There's currently a Lady Gaga thing going off, but that's not my cup of tea. It's more Jaya's cup of tea. She bought the skin for Lady Gaga. Um, but I did buy the Battle Pass. Um, and I did it because I, there, there was some sense to this. It was six ninety nine mm-hmm. to buy a thousand V bucks. I already had two hundred V bucks, so I unlocked the battle pass. And with unlocking the battle pass, I'm now at eight hundred and fifty V bucks. So I almost made my money back. So I love I'm hopping also, on your me to... battle pass purchase justification train, Sean. It was so much fun. <laughs> I really, I really enjoyed the ride. Like, no, no, no. Listen, I did this, and it was worth it. Okay, let me explain it. I was waiting for you to like oh, turn around down. and be like, like, see, look, I was over here and then I paid this much and then I did that. And when you divide these two numbers, it almost makes it worthwhile. Well, the, the thing is, I look at I looked at it and like the price of skin. So I've got the solid snake skin um, from Metal Gear Solid, which is great. It's one of my favorite PlayStation games from when I was growing up. I absolutely loved the original Metal Gear Solid. Um so I have that skin. I'm so close to getting the Peter Griffin skin, which is just hilarious. <laughs> Does um, his belly because, flop like, when he runs? Because that's what I want. No, he looks really ripped. It's oh, really? really? Um, yeah. I'll, when it, when I unlock it, I'll I'll take a picture and Please show do. you. I'll get him to do a funny dance as well. Um, so because obviously playing the Lego Fortnite with the kids, playing Fortnite as much as I have, I had like 400 battle stars. And I was like, they they kind of wasted sat there not doing anything. So if I, if I buy the battle pass and I'll go and unlock all the V book things that I want. So obviously I'll do that first to make some of my money back. So I've got enough V books to purchase the next battle pass without having to spend any money. And, and I'll just keep I'll get into that ecosystem of doing it because I'm playing it a lot with the kids in trios and stuff like that. So I'll keep doing that, and then I'll go through and I'll look and see if there's any emotes, any skins, any like weapon skins and stuff that I want on top of things like that. So I've gone through and I've purchased everything on and I've still got 200 battle stars left. So I, I, it's it's been worth it. I think as sure. far as buying into a battle pass, this is probably the, the, the only time you'll hear me say it's actually been worth the six ninety nine that I paid for it. So Listen, I'm just giving you shit. I have bought my fair share of stuff. <laughs> uh, some totally worth it some totally not so i'm just goofing with you man if you're having fun with it that's all that matters um anything else what's on the docket um i've got a little to the left is on there i've got play Mm -hmm. up um some more dead island um to just to continue the story and see how what other things Mm -hmm. i can unlock and how many different zombies i can maul and if the zombies get harder and bigger because at the moment there's just lots of them so um (laughs) And then with stuff that's coming out, I'll probably try Bluey. I'll see what that's like. See if it's funny. See if it plays better than the Peppa Pig game played. Because like normally when games come out like that, where they're, they're kids' games, they're, they're really lumpy and slow and a bit clunky to play. Um, from an adult perspective, anyway. Kids love them. But I'll, I want to see how Bluey plays. Good idea. I, I uh, My kids miss the Bluey train, I guess. I'm not sure what happened, but anyways, um, but I have thought about breaking it out with them and trying. I don't know if it's if it's a multiplayer game or not, if that's possible, but uh, maybe we can just pass the controller. Or I can just watch them play. So, um, so uh, that's on my docket as well. I'm not gonna lie, it's been crazy, crazy week. Uh, I I played played up. That's the only game that I played, and I only got a few hours into it. Um, I have not. Pl- I've only played it with children. And I'm here to tell you that uh, if you really loved the aggravation of Overcooked and you were like, man, I, I really loved how it made me just like with the partners I was playing with. Good news. Played Up has that same aspect still there. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like listen, I'm like, listen, Ariel. All you have to do is deliver the food, okay? Just, I mean, I love you. I, 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 I'm not, I'm not yelling. I'm just, I'm just saying, if you could deliver the food more efficiently, that would be fantastic. Please. I mean, so, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's still, still very much there, and, uh, but it is, it is fun in its own like quirky way. 
Um, but it also is a bit more intense, right? Because I don't know, you want to keep going because the further it's a roguelite uh, in in a sense, the further you get on in days, the more stuff you get to bring back and and like open up the main map. So, um, so there is there is a bit of or not a bit, there is a rogue roguelite elements to it, uh, but there is some progression as well. Um, you can get a different map, you can get different not map, but different uh, restaurant layouts. The first one we got was horrible. There was like kitchen, and you can put <laughs> stuff wherever you want. You can pick stuff up and move it. You before the day starts, you get to you get to tell the day when you're ready to go. So you get to pick stuff up and move it, and anybody can move stuff, which can be a bit frustrating when somebody's like, "No, no, no, we really don't want this here," and they keep like picking it up and dragging it back to another spot. And I'm like, "No, no, that's not how this needs to go." So like the whole thing has like this aspect of just like you have to like work together, and then you got like one child that's like, "No, no, no." It goes over here. I'm taking it. I'm like, no, I put it where I wanted it. Leave it alone. So anyway, <laughs> it was it was a it was a great dad, daughter, son moment. Parenting um, encapsulated bubble. So uh, that, that so, was my so really time. Quickly, yeah. Sorry, really quick. Bluey is local to to far play it with shared or split screen. Nice. Then we're definitely doing it. Then I'm going to definitely do it with them. Yeah, all right. Uh, so played up was the only game that I got to. I didn't get to little to the left. I wanted to. It didn't didn't uh, didn't happen. And uh, and so now Bluey, Bluey's on the docket. Little to the left and Bluey. That's my week right there, folks. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. Sounds nice and chilled out and peaceful and family. I like it when you get to play family games. So. That's true. And maybe, just maybe. Uh, I'll try Space Engineers, but not before we have another podcast because that doesn't come out until the 29th. Um, so that that's also one that I want to give a go to. Um, so those those are all my games. That's on my docket. Uh, anything else before we go to the pot of chat? No, let's hit and talk about lots of other things over the next box stuff. <laughs> Party chat. This is where we chat about stuff that's not Xbox. We kind of chill out a little bit, more relaxed, which I don't know. You, We're still pretty. Relaxed. As you can tell yeah, by my yeah. pose, <laughs> Sean went for the. No, relaxed. Sorry, I'm. I, no, it, it was a big, heavy back day in the gym today. So, the, like, the bottom of my back is is screaming at me at the moment. Gotcha. No. I do. I do. You get zero lumbar support from a wall. <laughs> oh. Um. So one of the things we wanted to hit on, because we do play our fair share of Nintendo, um, is that the Nintendo ha- Nintendo had a partner direct. And so we thought in party chat, we would kind of go over what we thought of the partner direct. Uh, this is not a Nintendo direct. So these are not Nintendo games, but they're third party partner games that will be on the Switch at some point. Um, so... The two that matter specifically to, to to Xbox, which we already talked about, Grounded and Pentiment, were on there. Um, Grounded makes my list of games that I'm excited for, which I've already mentioned. Uh, let's go through my list, and then you can go through yours. So, uh, Grounded, Arranger, which was this very kind of like slide puzzle-esque Zelda game is, is what it looked like. Every, when you moved, everything in that row moved with you. And and you had a like, like almost like a puzzle adventure game, on a slide puzzle, I guess. Epic Mickey rebrushed. Very excited for that. Super Monkey Ball. Very excited for that. World of Goo Two. Somewhat excited about that. Fantasy Life. Need to see more to know if I'm excited about that. Crab Game. Not gonna buy it on Switch now that I know it's on Game Pass. I had actually kind of forgotten about that. <laughs> uh, but now that we mentioned that, it was actually. I believe it actually came out on it revealed on Xbox before Nintendo as a Game Pass game, I believe. Oh. Um if Fair I enough. Yeah, I think it was like last year's uh showcase or two years ago showcase. Anyways. Uh NSO stuff out out now. So uh so that's my list of like and there's a, that's a decent list. I think there was like twenty ish games they said. And so I got eight that are like somewhat excited. What about you? 
Um, so Mickey Epic work, uh, Disney Epic Mickey re rebrushed. Um, I wanted to do that. That was a, a game that I enjoyed uh, playing for a little bit um, originally. So it'd be nice to to go back and see what they've kept in and what they've changed and how much they've improved the graphics. Um, I was a little bit interested in World of Goo uh, too. I'm mm -hmm. kind of sat there thinking. Why didn't the world of Goo ever come to Game Pass? Because it seems like a really simple game yeah. to, to have on there um, and would work great as touch controls via cloud on a mobile device. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I was excited for you for Grounded because I thought if they do have the cross save yeah, kind of stuff, that would be awesome and you would uh, be straight in on that. Um, Super Monkey Ball. So. I'm really excited for that because it's a game that I know if I bought it would be something that me and Lindsay played together. Oh fun. Um, she was a big she was a big Super Monkey Ball fan uh, growing up. So um it's that's something I want to get like kind of entice her in so I might see if there's if there's a demo I might try the demo and see if she enjoys the demo and then probably uh, drop some money on the game. Should be pretty cool. Um and then that was it really for me in terms of like the big stuff, like mm -hmm. the, the the sizzle reel kind of thing they went through until they dropped the NSO stuff. And when they dropped the NSO stuff, my mind just melted. I was so excited. Um, Snake Rattle and Roll as an for was an instant win straight away. I used to play that game um, when I went to my grandparents on a weekend. Um, they had. Uh, an SNES as well as I had an SNES but they had different games to me and I would like take games there and bring games back and stuff but Snake Rattle and Roll was one I always remember playing um, with my cousins and stuff like that so there was a red snake and a blue snake and you had to work together you had to avoid the giant foot squashing on you and you had to eat things dodge bombs and stuff like that it was a bit of a platformer and a puzzler kind of game um, and I really enjoyed it so I was super excited for that and there Blast Corps was another game that I used to love playing on the uh, N64 um, so, you know, those those two games being there was fantastic. And then Killer Instinct, the Super Nintendo version of Killer Instinct, was one of those side scrolling beat em ups that like I owned as a kid. I used to play as the little um, pirate skeleton that could transform into other people and stuff like that. Mm. Um, so I really enjoyed that. So I like. They started showing that, and then once they announced that they were available today, I was like, yes. So I know what I'm going to do when it gets a bit quiet over the weekend. Nice. So. Nice, nice. Yeah, so I uh, so a snake rattle roll, is that a two-player game? Like you said, there's two snakes. Yep. Yeah, okay. It's a two-player game. Is it only a two-player game, or can you control both snakes? Um. So you can play it on your own. Okay. Um... And and you just have the one snake. Oh, okay. or you have two snakes. Okay, gotcha. Hmm. Man, I the I this one totally missed me. So I thought that was great. I was kind of like whatever, and you were like snake rattle and roll, and I was like, oh, okay, oh, all right, cool. So See, I I played really spurious games as a kid. Like I didn't get into Zelda really until Ocarina of Time. Mario, I I played obviously. I played. Um, the original Super Mario Brothers quite a lot on the NES. Um and then on the SNES I kind of like I played um Super Mario World, but I was more into the Yoshi stuff. So I play I ended up playing more Yoshi's Island than I did play Mario. Um I, I did link to the past with Zelda, but it, you know the games I enjoyed playing were things like Snake Rattle and Roll. Um I dabbled in Metroid a little bit, but then Zombie Ain't, Zombies Ain't My Neighbors was one of the, the most played games I ever played, and I loved that game. Um, and then in the N64, that's obviously Ocarina of Time, um, Majora's Mask, Mario 64, uh, Banjo and Kazooie. So that's how I started then getting into those like big 3D platforming games. So. Yeah. But then a game that I absolutely adored on the N64 was Glover. So that and that was a really weird um 3D platformer. So um yeah, see I missed that one too. I just I think I was pretty much a Nintendo guy. Like if it wasn't a Nintendo game, I didn't play it um back then. So 
Um, so like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Or is Glover a Nintendo game and I just totally missed it? I think it was. Was it? Um, huh. I just missed that one. Crazy. Anyways, um, so the one thing I did find interesting about this, though, is like, and I'm guessing this is because the Peach game comes out March 22nd, but uh, like, not, like, except for the NSO stuff, which is obviously out now, like, none of these games are coming out. The closest game is Grounded on April 16th. Uh, the rest of everything is like April... Crab Crab Games April twenty fifth, then May, then June, um, then October, and then Epic Mickey's twenty twenty four sometime, which probably means it's not going to be out until next year. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so there you go. Um, yep. Yeah, I just thought it was. I just thought it was. But I'm guessing maybe they did it. They wanted to give their Peach Game some space, which. I don't know. As as I see it more and more, I'm kind of becoming less and less excited about it. Every time they release a new trailer or whatever, I'm like, eh, I was kind of interested in the Peach game. Yeah. And, but I'll still get it because my daughter, because so Ariel's going to love it. So it doesn't matter. It's, it, I'm gonna and they've got the Mario Donkey Kong game out at the moment as well. So they don't want to take too far away from that. And mm-hmm. the other thing, I think they're waiting on the Switch 2 for any more bigger titles. I yeah. think the next Metroid um, drop is going to come with... I hope the next Metroid drop is going to Metroid Prime Four on the new Switch on release would be that would just, be pretty yes. sweet. That would that would be great. You get a Metroid Prime game and a Mario game, and you've pretty much got the fan. You've got all aspects of the fan game fan base. If you if you drop with, both with of the those. with a sprinkly tease of a Zelda game coming the next year. <laughs> oh, that's uh, what about a top down Zelda game coming <gasps> next year? Oh, there you go. Because I don't think they're re- gonna. I don't remaster. think they can put out a new Zelda game. Maybe like TOTK no. DLC, but that's about all they could do. Mario Kart. <laughs> no, there's never gonna be <laughs> another Mario Kart again. They're gonna be. It's gonna be Mario Kart Deluxer Deluxist. I don't know, something like that. <laughs> Plat- Platinum Deluxe. Plus, <laughs> and it's going to sell five bazillion <laughs> copies on Switch Two, just like it did Switch One. That's exactly what's, just like it did Switch. That's exactly what's going to happen, and and people are going to love it. They're going to bitch about it for like a year, and then they're just going to end up loving it. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. Well, how's the chubby brackets going then, dude? We'll we'll come away from that. Well, how's okay. like, how's how's yeah. life in general? But how's the chubby's bracket going? Specifically, so my weight loss journey once again. Uh, there's two weeks left. Um, I would love to get on the scale tomorrow and not be in the 200s. I'm at 201. I started this journey at 218. My goal was to get to 190. I will get there, but not in eight weeks. That's not going to happen. Um, so uh, so yes, I would love to. Get on the scale and be under, be have no two in the, as my wife calls it. This is the best, as my wife calls it, Wonderland. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, that's my that's my goal for tomorrow. But we'll see if that actually happens. So. But yep. win the one nineties once more. And then I just got ten pounds to go. Ah, uh, man, to be under under two hundred would be nice, but. <laughs> I, I crept back to 211. As I said, I've crept back up to 211, but my muscle mass has, has increased. So, yeah. You just, but the increase in muscle mass is my metabolism's unreal. Like, I can't stop eating. I'm just, I feel really hungry all the time. So, like, Sweet. constantly. Sweet. So, um, well, then hey, having, if it's muscle, two... it's muscle, man. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a good deal right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll take that. Yeah. Sure. I've still got crep teeth. They're coming out in four days, which is making the eating part really, really horrific because there's only so many foods you can eat that are enjoyable that don't require much chewing. So, mm-hmm. I get you. And I'm getting pretty sick of porridge and soup at the moment. <laughs> I, I, dude, I, I'm, I'm sorry. That's all I could say. And I won't complain about my teeth ever again. You win. <laughs> yeah. So that yeah, next time we do a podcast, I'll have had two teeth out. That'd be cool. I'll there have like. Go. See, that's a way to lose weight. Pain. Just start taking go. out pieces of your body. Just <laughs> I've removed. <laughs> How much of my leg could I get away with? No, I'm kidding. So. I'm doing a pretty good job at, at, at 
almost damaging limbs by skateboarding again as well. I took the kids to the skate park the other day. That was fun. I've learned a few things. I've learned how much you twist and move while skateboarding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh... So I, like, I hurt my... Places hurt that I forgot places could hurt. So. <laughs> That's... I mean, you know, it's got to be a workout. I've never been able to do anything on wheels, um, just to be honest. So, uh, so yeah, I... Uh... Can't skate, can't roller skate. I can, I can ride a bicycle. Okay, I can do that. I'm not, I'm not a fantastic bicycle rider, but uh, I can do that. As, as proven for me having to, you know, repair my elbow, um, I, I can't ride a bike. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. No, that's a different story. Okay, I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> I, I can just barely ride a bike like down a street. You're like blazing down a dirt path with, with hills and such. So totally different. Yeah. By blazing, you mean sliding down on my face and elbow. <laughs> <laughs> the friction started a fire. It was a blaze, I'm sure. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, it's yeah. Um, it's been crazy at the moment. We we had a week off. The kids had like half term last week, and then we've gone back into full blown. I'm at work all like it's my bad week this week. So. It's the, like, the crazy one where I do 72 hours in a week. Uh, Lindsay's back at work. All the kids' stuff are back on it. Jay is getting prepped for uh, exams for college to detect detect her university selection and stuff like that. So it's just everything's crazy at the moment. Mm-hmm. I feel you. I feel that, that same way. If I can get through Saturday, my guess is, my hope is that if I get through Saturday, all the craziness will be over and uh, and I'll have some not downtime, but some less crazy time for the at least first part of March. So Friday, tomorrow, I'm taking, well, today for you, I'm taking uh, Ariel on a dad and daughter dance. So, uh, which is like, yeah, it's like this thing that the the local community center does every year. It's like one of her favorite things ever. So, so yeah, we're doing that. Oh, that means that Becca's going to upload a, a photo to Facebook. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> the, the year- secretly one of the reasons why i added i did i had very crazy backstory i added nick's friend i've got nick as a friend on facebook but i also added nick's wife becca as a friend on facebook um because like i love the costumes that she makes for you guys and stuff like that and i know that she does all the seasonal photos and things mm-hmm. like that so it's been really cool to sketch because we we ended really like we barely talked this week because you've been crazy busy i've been crazy mm-hmm. busy i think i checked in yesterday to make sure you were doing okay um but that's such as life we, you know we as well as running this podcast, Nick does two crazy things um, in terms of his normal job and then he, like the the whole skybound drone photography thing. Um, obviously, I have a job and we've both got kids and things like that. So we have so many different responsibilities on top of all this kind of stuff, which is why I allude to like life being absolutely crazy sometimes. And Nick's is exactly the same. So, mm-hmm. and I am not it's a nice I am not a Facebooker. So if you're like, well, why doesn't he just? I just don't. I just don't. I have a Facebook account. Uh, and I don't do anything with it. So, so Sean was like, "Well, he is a very boring Facebook. I don't get anything from Nick's Facebook whatsoever." So, um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, but yeah, go use go like we we talked about with the perks. Go download Cam. Give it a try. Um, yeah. Like you know, if it if it's got crazy, you give that a try. See how you feel. I'm gonna do it. I'm definitely. Um, I'm now looking for my phone and making sure it's charged because you know it's. Three o'clock in the morning in the UK. Nobody has their phone charged at three o'clock in the morning in the UK. Um, but no, I probably do. I will probably do the same because I'm going to have a nap tomorrow for sure. Mm. Not today. Later today. <laughs> yeah. If I was up at three, I would be napping for sure, hundred um, percent. So yeah. So I think that man, we went long. This is a, we hit an hour and forty five minutes today or this week. <gasps> oh no! I know. That means we'll have to have a shot one next week. Maybe. <laughs> maybe that'll happen. All right. Well, so, we had a, we had a yeah we had, yeah so we had a lot to hit this week, which is why we've gone a little bit longer. Um, there's been some great news come out in terms of um, stuff happening for Xbox. So fantastic that they got up in there at a ten percent of overall playtime via the cloud. Uh, we had to hit on the the podcast that those guys dropped because we couldn't not do that. It was a, a lot of good news, and with all the speculation that came towards uh, before that business update, the fans were going crazy. 